you have a plan? Do you have a planner? Do you have the best products inside your financial plan? So that's history. That's what it's, or that's kind of looking forward. That's what you have to look forward to. What's the past? Ask yourself these questions. How long have I worked? How much money have I made? How much of that do I have left today? And am I happy with the answers? Just let that sink in for a minute. That's looking forward and that's looking backwards. Okay? And the main reason people fail financially is they do not have a financial plan. And there's a whole bunch of other reasons too. And we're going to talk about all those reasons here today on this show. The 13 major reasons why people fail financially because that's our next workshop. That's the one that we did last Thursday. We're going to continue talking about the 13 major reasons why people fail financially. The 13 obstacles that you have to overcome to become financially independent. The 13 obstacles you have to overcome to help you keep some of your hard-earned dollars. Joining us is uh, Stephen Baird. Good morning. And uh, he's been here many times before, and we both represent Scotia McLeod. We both represent financial planning. We both believe in financial planning. We both believe that people need to have the best products inside their financial plan. Why is it that they don't achieve that? Why is it that people fail financially? Well, Let's talk about that. Sure. Yeah, there's so many reasons, but it all comes down to being motivated, like we were chatting about last week. Uh, you got to want to. You got to want to. And you actually have to put some effort into it every week and every day. And there's, there's these little things. It's like fitness. You have to work on it every day. And it's rewarding. It's great when you have all that, that area of your Well, your you just house. told me you lost 10 pounds. Right. What's your formula? Well, it's following, you know, doing the things that I need to do every day. Like what? Well, you know, take, you know simple things like taking your vitamins, drinking enough water, eating frequently enough, eating the right things, staying away from the wrong things. And it's, uh, it's, it's like gravity. It's, it's something you need to do every day and follow through on those little steps that add up to big success. So yeah. when it comes to financial success... What would you have to do that you don't do maybe now? Well, f for me uh, personally, uh, it's really watching my cash flow. I mean, uh, on on that uh, site, mint.com, I, tra I, I track every cent that I spend on my credit card or my debit card. It, it itemizes it all. So I know exactly what's been allocated towards gas for the month, utilities for the month. And I actually have a budget set up where it buzzes and says, hey, you're over your budget on um, you know, business expenses or something like that. And it's being aware, aware every day and every week and every month of, of what's going out that door. Okay. So if somebody wants to get a hold of us at the office, how do they, how, how do they reach us? They <laughs> well, want to make an appointment for a second opinion on their investment portfolio to get a written financial plan, right? Uh, to find out where they stand right now. How do they reach us? Well, it's a good question because we've got a unique setup with our team, mm -hmm. and we always talk about Frida being down at the office right now. Um, Frida basically organizes your schedule and to some degree my schedule with regards to sitting down to prospective clients and, and existing clients. And it's just a phone call away where there's somebody there who can properly organize access to yourself and, and myself. Whether it be, a, be whether it be by phone or poor personally, so that's why we're always giving out that number, so people can say, "Hey, I'd like to sit down with Fred now. I'd like to sit down with Steve, and um, and start that process." It's so painless. It's, it's it's you know we've got a very smooth process there. So if you're out there right now and you're listening to this show, and you desire to do better financially, you make a phone call. What's the number? Well, Frida can be reached at 604. I was checking because I want, yeah. to, I want to make sure I don't get it. 737-3512. And she answers and the phone. And she's there right now. She's there right now. Today's Sunday. Happy Easter. Okay. Um, 1005. She's down at the office and, and there to accept your call. But, you know, obviously in this day and age, we're not going to connect with everybody at exactly the right time. You know, you can call us at 4 in the morning and say, hey, call me back and let's let's make an appointment for, you know, the next week or so. Um, because of the preparation, often we're booking appointments into next week. Um, but, you know, there's always a time that we can connect, whether it be by phone or in person. So once again, area code 604-737-3512. Right. Frida, you want to book an appointment for a second opinion on your investment portfolio, a uh, written financial plan, see it at our next uh, workshop where we teach you what we talk about here on this show. So again, we're going to talk about the 13 major reasons why people fail financially today, and we're going to try to get through the whole 13. We may not get there. If we don't, well, we'll do it again maybe next week, <laughs> or you enroll in our workshop. 
right. calling Frida. I'm going to give that number out once again. It's 604-737-3512. You're calling long distance. It's 800-661-1495. And I'm going to be in Nanaimo tomorrow and Wednesday. So if you're over on the island, you can call Frida, book an appointment to see myself. Be happy to see you. I'll be at the Coast Bastion in Nanaimo uh, uh, tomorrow and Wednesday. Okay? Tuesday, Tuesday, or, Wednesday. Right. Excuse me, Tuesday right. and Wednesday, yeah. Yeah, I think you've got a packed schedule this this month, be, Fred, but you know, being that you're there every month and we're we're planning uh, planning out there, you know, I'm sure there's a way that we can make it work. And Someone you want to talk to us you. live, it's area code 604-280-0650. Again, if you're calling long distance, it's 1-877-280-0650. Easy to remember, 650 is the last three digits. That's the call letters of the station. So if you're out there, you're listening to the show, you've just joined us. I'm certified financial planner, Fred Snyder, also registered financial planner representing Scotia McLeod, which is part of the Scotia Bank Group. And uh, we believe that you're richer than you think. We <laughs> find that all the time. So you're out there. You don't think you have any money to save and invest. You don't think that we can help you say it would be a waste of time. It's not a waste of time. It's well worth your time. Whether you do something now, later, or never isn't the important issue. The important issue is that you get the information so you can decide when and if you want to implement it when you want to use it, how you can use that information to achieve your financial hopes, plans, dreams, and ambitions. That's what we're talking about here on this show. We're talking about your financial success, and we're really talking about your money and how to keep it. How to keep it is the important part of that, and they don't teach us that in school. And, I mean, I could talk for hours and hours and hours about how to keep your money. Susie Orman does all that and lots of other people about how to keep it. But you need three things. Three P's. Three P's. The first P stands for plan. Visualize a blueprint. When you're the great a, big dollar sign on it. When you're building a house. You yeah. Just, well, you need, to you have need a, blueprint. a blueprint. You need a blueprint. Okay. You need a written plan with deadlines built into it. It's a document. It's a financial plan. You need that plan. We provide that plan for people and you prepare those plans right. basically. Right. So somebody comes into the office and they say, well, what should I expect? Well, the first thing that you need to expect is that you go through what we call the client discovery process, which is a process of disclosing information, a list of your assets line by line, a list of what you owe line by line, your income from all sources, your expenses from all sources, your life insurance policies and all that kind of stuff. We collect data and information. And then we take that information and we build it into a written plan. So we have to collect the information, then we have to punch that into a plan. And then we have to do an analysis on your portfolio. This is like an MRI, this is like an x-ray, okay? This is an analysis of your investments. And when we look at your investments, we need to determine what the expected rate of return on that portfolio that you have is, whether it's going to get you the rate of return that you need to achieve your financial objectives. So are you running in the right direction? Yeah. Are you, are, you know, you want to go north. You don't want to be going south. Right. Uh, you don't or want northeast. to be going east or west. <laughs> you got to be going directly north. As fast as you can. As well, fast as, you, as you, well, <laughs> well, maybe that's a bit much, but that's you know, yeah. probably maybe taking too much risk. You want to take a direct route. Okay. But what we need to do is to determine whether you're on track. Like, for example, uh, maybe you want to retire at age 65. And at age 65, you want to have an inflation adjusted income of $40,000 a year. That means the first year is 40,000. The next year is 40,000 plus an extra 3% for inflation. The next year is uh, uh, 40,000 times 1.03 uh, times 1.03 because you're compounding at a 3% right? for growth. Uh, and if you, uh, if, if you look at that income over a period of uh, time, let's say you divide the rate of inflation into 72. Three goes into 72 how many times? Three, so it'd be 20, um, 23. 24. So, therefore, your, basically, your income has to double in 23 years just to keep up with inflation if the rate of inflation is 3%. So, 
And, uh, you know, I found that's that, pretty scary. Yeah. Do you have a pension plan that that uh, 20 or 30 years from now is going to pay you twice as much as it pays you when it starts? Right. It's got to be inflation adjusted. Your old age pension, your Canada pension plan, they're inflation adjusted. So is your pension, is the income from your investments inflation adjusted? It needs to be or you're going to fall short somewhere along the line. And then you have to say to yourself, well, we're living longer because of tremendous advances in, in, in medicine and all that kind of stuff, maybe I can expect to live to be 100. Is my money going to live until I'm 100? What happens if I live to be 100 and I'm broke when I'm 80? I'm broke for 20 years. Uncomfortable. <laughs> okay. So you got to make sure that your money lives as long as you do. Right. And, and, and th these are all issues that are addressed inside of a proper financial plan goes without saying inflation is the number one risk I think a lot of people are facing, but they don't, they're not aware of it. What about taxes? Yeah. And also you, you mentioned with regards to pension plans, to define pension plans. When I'm building a plan for somebody and I'm using a rate of inflation, I often um, have to adjust the rate of inflation that's used for that pension plan because often it's lower than what's reality. And, um, you know, when you forecast that out, it, there's, there's, there's a risk in, in your future income that needs to be acknowledged and understood. Well, you know that I insist when we do a financial plan that we, when we look at expenses that we get it item by item by item, mm -hmm. okay? Like how much is your rent or how much is your mortgage payment? How much are the property taxes? How much does it cost you to drive your car? How much do you spend on Christmas and birthday presents and stuff like that? How much do you give to charity? What's your groceries cost? and so on and so on. Right. I insist on that breakdown, but you've done enough financial plans by now, uh, and so have I, that I can tell you that for 90% of the people, the monthly planned expenditures are gonna range between $3,000 and $6,000. Right. Most of the time around 45, 4,000, maybe 4,500. Mm -hmm. So for most people, they, they need to retire with, it, with, with an income of about $4,000 from all sources to be able to cover their lifestyle expenses. After tax. After tax, that's exactly right. But I consider lifestyle expenses taxes to be part of them, okay? Right. So therefore, uh, it doesn't really matter what the numbers are, but you got to know what the numbers are, okay? And the only way you're ever gonna figure that out is to sit down with somebody that's knowledgeable that can walk you through that process. For example, you sat at one of the meetings that I did um, in our boardroom, and we did a budget for people, expense item by item by item, didn't we, around the table? Right. How many people got it right? Well, Not very right. many. They certainly didn't know the answers all the way along, and, and there was a lot of, uh, we had a lot of interaction during the course of, what, two hours that we were doing yeah, that? Yeah, they needed a lot of coaching just to get through that part. And to understand what, where those dollars, oh, yeah, house insurance, oh, yeah, life insurance, yeah. you know, those bills, well, oh, yeah, I gotta, I have to budget uh, $150 for a future roof or garage or paving the driveway. I don't know. I mean, there's all those different expenses. That you Property need to think taxes. About. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. You know, you... Your property taxes are four thousand dollars a year. Do you put down four thousand, or do you put down three hundred thirty-three dollars a month? Okay. Either one. We can work. We can work yeah, the numbers. Yeah. But it, however you do it, maybe sometimes you're better off to do it all annually because some people it's a lump sum once a year and they don't even know how to do it on a monthly basis. Right. Just divide it by twelve. The average person, the average adult, will spend about three hundred dollars a month on groceries. Mm -hmm. I know that on average, I'm not saying everybody's the same, but on average, that you spend about $350 a month on groceries. That's what I spend. That's what it costs me to eat. Mm -hmm. And I'm not including eating out because I consider that to be entertainment. That's another, well, it's that's something, another heading. It's something you need to divide those two, absolutely, with yeah. regards to your budget. Okay. So we need to know what is your lifestyle expenditures and if it comes out to 4000 a month, then we got to inflation adjust that number. Then we have to determine how... The time period that has to be amortized over, if, you know, if you retire at uh, 65 and you live to be age 85, that's 20 years. Uh, we don't know how long you're going to live, so we got to make an assumption. Some people will say, well, let's assume I'm going to live to be 100. Some people have actually said 120. Okay, <laughs> well, you know, case. you never know. You never know. It's happened with, before. With, with the stem, so, the, uh, stem 
sell stuff they have going right now, they can fix just about anything anymore. I watched a, uh, a documentary the other day where they took a kid and using a 3D printer, they made some fingers for him. Wow. Believe it or not. Okay? It is unbelievable what the future holds in store for us. So we can't say that our life, just think, uh, when they launched the Canada Pension Plan back in 1965, 64, 65, the life expectancy for a Canadian male who was 65 was age 70. It was only five years. You and I'd be dead today based on those statistics, <laughs> okay, if we retired at 65. Five years. Today it's age 83. Right. Tomorrow, and will it be 90? Will it be 100? Will it be 110? There's a guy in Vancouver, he's 107. It was in the paper the other day. I think there's about 5,000 Canadians that are over 100 right now. Oh, I think it's even more than that. Is it? I think so. Well, I remember when it was 3,000. So the number is going up all the time. Right. I mean, I've had three clients that were well over 100 in my uh, mm -hmm. uh, oh, during yeah. my career. You hear about it all the time. So basically, these are the factors that need to be built into a financial plan. How long am I going to live? How much money do I need to cover my lifestyle expenditures? And where's it going to come from? How much am I going to get from Canada Pension Plan? How much am I going to get from Old Age Pension? How much am I going to get from my defined benefit pension plan? What if the company that's going to guarantee that defined benefit goes broke? And most, and most of the defined benefit pension plans in Canada right now are underfunded. Mm -hmm. Where does the money come from? Right. You need a plan. And if you're going to depend on the government, you think the government's going to look after you. i got a bridge to sell you. It's called the Lionsgate. I'll give you a good deal. Uh, bottom line is that we need a proper plan. We need a proper planner, a good financial planner to be our coach. And we need the best products inside our financial plan. If we don't have those three things, we're, we're heading for disaster. That's the bottom line. So let's talk about the 13 reasons why we fail financially. And again, if you've just tuned in, I'm certified financial planner, Fred Snyder, also registered financial planner representing uh, Scotia McLeod. I'm here with uh, Stephen Barrett, and we're talking about your financial future. We're talking about your money. We're talking about your money and how to keep it. And we how should to get keep some, it uh, is the most important part. Let's get some calls in. It's uh, 604-280-0650. Give us a call. We're live and interactive. We want to we want to receive your calls and hear your questions. If you're long distance, it's just 877 in front of that. 877-280-0650. Give us a call, and we'd be happy to uh, answer any of your questions. So the number one reason, the number one reason, I believe, and I could, we could kick this around forever, but I think one of the fundamental number one reasons why people fail financially is overall lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. They didn't teach us. When we went to school, they taught us how to make money. The knowledge is out there, though. Lots of, lots of knowledge out there. So what's, so where what's, are you going to get the knowledge, holding, what's Steve? Holding them up? <laughs> let's focus on this. Right. You, you, would, would, would you agree that everybody, everybody needs more knowledge? Would you agree on that? Absolutely. You and me included. Okay. For sure. And you and have I to... have both have to take courses. i got to get 30 CE credits a year right now just to maintain my licensing. Mm -hmm. Okay. As we all do. That's yeah. normal. We have to continue. It's like a doctor. Yeah. You so, you, so, so you have to, you, you have the knowledge, but you got to keep it up to date. Mm -hmm. And as, as we talk about it, it evolves, it changes, it, it gets heavier and greater and there's more and more knowledge that we need. So where are we going to get the knowledge that we need? As investors or uh, for you and I? That's a good question. We're talking not about you and I right now. Right, okay. We're talking about our clients. Okay. Where do they get the knowledge they need? Um, well, what's going mm -hmm. through my head is what knowledge to seek in the first place. You know, when it comes to the plan, that's your, that's your blueprint. And there's a lot of little intricacies that go in there. People are completely liberated when we go through all those details of the plan and, and understand their picture in more detail. So, you know, we can help as advisors direct our clients as to where to go and what to learn. And that's what our workshops are all about. Well, that's one way right. to get it. Right. Okay. We need to be tangible about this. Okay. So uh, workshops, workshops, attending workshops, seminars and workshops, mm -hmm. good way to get knowledge. Reading books. Everybody should get themselves an electronic reading device, a Kobo, a Kindle, whatever, an iPad, right? an iPhone. Okay. Okay. Um, Almost every book that you can get right now, there's an electronic version of it, which can be downloaded wirelessly 
for a couple of bucks. So there's all so, that information at the fingertips, at your fingertips. At your fingertips. I can I, I can carry my, my iPhone in my breast pocket, and I got I think I have 24 books on there that I read all the time. And for me, I'm more of an audio person, so mm-hmm. I download those books using Audible mm-hmm. and listen to them on the way to the to the office or whenever I'm in the car. It's mm-hmm. great. And even with those applications, you can speed it up, speed the mm-hmm. fellow's voice up or whoever's reading it, depending on how well you can uh, absorb that information. So lack of knowledge is about how you put all the pieces of the puzzle together. So when we talk about lack of knowledge, we're talking about lack of knowledge when it comes to a financial plan, lack of knowledge when it comes to finding a financial advisor, lack of knowledge when it comes to financial products, lack of knowledge when it comes to the mathematics of investing. How do we determine all these things and how do we build that into a plan? Having a a good solid knowledge base is important because it helps you ask your financial advisor the right questions. Just think about that. If you don't have the knowledge, you can't ask your financial advisor the right questions. If, if, If you take fear, that's the acronym for false evidence appearing real. So the opposite of fear is knowledge. Right. Pe- right. People don't people don't do things because they're afraid. People don't come and talk to me or you because they're afraid. They're afraid of what they might find out. They're afraid to look in the mirror. They're afraid that we're going to say you haven't got a hope of achieving financial success. It's fear, okay? This is a huge problem. So this is something that people need to deal with. You have to acquire knowledge so that you have confidence. Confidence to create a plan and to be able to follow it. There's the, I think you hit the nail right on the head there with confidence about it. There's no way anybody is going to know everything uh, about uh, finances. Well, do you know everything? No, not at all. I mean, a good friend of mine is a chartered accountant called me with regards to (laughs) questions around um, making donations to uh, RSP after age 71. Mm -hmm. You know, together we worked out and we figured out the answer to his question. But, um, you know, you know, you and I know where to go when we need information. And we've got an amazing people in Toronto, particularly in the planning side that I've been relying on when I'm building plans for folks. Well, when we talk... You know, when when we talk about the financial planning process, we're talking about knowledge regarding vesting, cash flow, RRSPs, deferred profit sharing plans, future value, past value. There's all kinds of concepts and ideas that we need to know more about so that we have the right amount of confidence so that we just feel good about where we're going from a financial point of view. Mm-hmm. We can see the finan- we can see our financial future. We can sit back and we can visualize it. And we have confidence that we're going to get there so that we can sleep at nights. That's the bottom line. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, if you've just joined us, the number to call is area code 604-280-0650. If you're calling long distance, it's 877-280-0650. You want to log on, it's www.am650radio.com and click on uh, uh, watch TV and and you'll be able to see what we look like. It's right on there. It's right on the AM650 website. Web page, and again, there are people. Some people who are shy, reluctant to talk on the air. They think, "Oh gosh, this is going to be a horrible." I'd really love to call, and if you're like that and you're shy, you can talk to Frida. Frida's down at the office. You can talk to Frida at area code six zero four seven three seven three five one two. If you're calling long distance, it's eight hundred six six one one four nine five. If you've just tuned in, I'm certified financial planner Fred Snyder, also registered financial planner. We're talking about your money, more importantly, about your money and how to keep it. How to keep it are the key words in that phrase. Your money doesn't really say anything. Your money and how to keep it does say something. And that's what we're talking about. So what's your plan? I'd like to make a point with regards to knowledge here. And it, I just want to make sure that people are not overwhelmed by this concept. Um, you're not going to know every single answer to every single question just like that. And I think this this issue of the fact that finances can be a little bit complex, um, they get scared or they, they, they start to procrastinate or overanalyze things and don't make any action. Come on down and give us a, you know, give us a call and we'll walk through things from a very high level in a very simple way and um, just get that process started. I think it's really important. Well, there it is right there. Lack of knowledge, it starts with knowledge. Financial success starts with knowledge. 
Assess your knowledge and experience. Be honest with yourself and with your advisors. Overestimating your investment knowledge makes it difficult for advisors to help you. Rate your knowledge about money. We were just chatting about that before the show. That's correct. Is, 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 is your knowledge low? Is it moderate? Is it higher? Is it sophisticated? Now, I'm going to tell you, the last workshop I did, I asked the people in the room, I said, how would you rate your investment knowledge? You were there. What, what, what happened? What, what was the result of that question? 95% of the people said it was low. I think one or two hands went up out of the whole group that said it was not low. Anything, Everybody anything was above low. That, right. Okay. Which is fine. That's the way, that's why we're here. That's why we mm-hmm. do what we do. So Avoid it, products or strategies you don't understand. Warren, even Warren Buffett mm-hmm. won't invest in something if he doesn't understand it. If you have questions about an investment recommendation, be sure to have them answered before making decisions. Continue education, books, and the Internet. The Internet itself is a fabulous way to acquire knowledge about just about anything. What you know today will be obsolete tomorrow. Remember that as well because you have to stay up to date. You may be up to date today, but if you say, I'm going to just sit where I'm at right now and I don't continue to learn and grow my knowledge, you're going to get behind. Things change. So knowledge is the foundation of financial success as far as I'm concerned. And there isn't any reason why anybody listening to this show can't take the Canadian Securities course, the mutual fund course, the insurance course. All these courses are available online. There's a wealth of knowledge out there. You just need direction to be able to access this knowledge. And it can be fun. And we can provide that. You know, Places to start, great resources that we've come across that are helpful for clients. We'd be happy to share. And, and, and to sum all that up, while it's important to grow your money, it's just as important to grow your knowledge. You want your money to last as long as you do? I think that's part of that equation. Right. So get on the line, give us a call. Let's talk about your money, more importantly about your money and how to keep it. Let's talk about the financial planning process just a little bit before we go on to the next step. I think there's 10 steps in the financial planning process. First one is education, so we're still on that one right now, okay? The next step is, is your investment goals. It's, it's, it's sitting down and establishing some financial goals. I want to be financially independent by the time I'm 60. I want to have a million dollars in my bank by the time I'm 65. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Right. You, you establish a girl. I, I want to have a place at Whistler. I want a, I want a 40-foot yacht. I, I don't know what those goals are. Well, it's great. And I work with a lot of folks in the planning process around goals and, and talking about um, it's basically their canvas to paint. So you can create goals that are any, anything you can think of. Then you have to evaluate where you stand right now. That's, that's the client discovery process that we talked about. You come into the office. We help you evaluate where you stand right now. So you're sitting out there right now. You're listening to the show and you're saying to myself, well, where am I at right now? From a, financial plan, from a financial planning point of view, how do I compare with my neighbors and other people that I work with? Where would I stand? Let's evaluate where you stand right now. We're talking about your assets, your liabilities, your income, your expenses. Where do I stand right now? See, you need to figure that out. And you've got to be brutally honest with yourself in, the, in that process. You need to manage your cash. You've got to make sure that you pay yourself first. Part of everything you earn is yours to keep. And the only way you're going to ensure that that happens is you must pay yourself first. So every time I make a dollar from now on, I'm going to save 10 cents for myself and I'm going to live on the other 90 cents for the rest of my life. So I can only spend 90% of what I earn. Now, that itself is a big key in financial success Mm -hmm. because the opposite of that often happens. We spend a dollar ten for every dollar that we earn, and we end up going in the hole. We go into debt because we spend more than we earn. We have a deficit instead of a surplus. We want to avoid that. And we don't want a neutral cash flow either. We want to make sure that at the end of the month, there's always something left over that we can pay ourselves first. That's cash management. That's a budget. Next, we need to protect ourselves against risk. What happens if we get real successful and we start accumulating money and we're doing such a great job and then something screws up somehow or another and we get sued? Or lose your your income. Yeah. 
we get fired because we don't do our job somehow or another, or we our neighbor trips on our stairs and sues us, or our dog bites our neighbor or something like that. <laughs> These things happen. Mm-hmm. I know a guy who got in a big problem with ICBC over an accident that his wife got into, okay? And I think a $500,000 lawsuit is what he was sued for by ICBC. Wow. Okay? I wonder what that did to his financial plan. Okay? So these are all issues that you need to deal with, okay? So what are the risks? What are some of the risks that people face? Well, the main one is loss of income. You know, that's one of those things. There's also the risk of inflation, which we've talk, talked about. There's risk within a portfolio. There's all kinds of different life risks. How about divorce? Happen. Right. Is Absolutely. that a risk? Absolutely. Well, I've had one and you've had one, right? <laughs> we've both had one. Was that a risk? What's the chances of divorce happening? It's 50-50. Well, the, 50, it's the, 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 I mean, the numbers I'm, are out there, yeah, St- definitely. Steve, if I said to you, heads you win financially, tails you lose. Boy, that's pretty stiff odds, okay? Think about that. It's huge, okay? You, 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 health. What about disability? What about uh, long-term care and, and, and Alzheimer's and all that kind of stuff, okay? Uh, what happens if we get cancer, heart disease? What happens if we're traveling? You know, I, I go down to Birch Bay and I end up get, getting a heart attack down there and I end up in a hospital in Bellingham. What's the bill? Is, is, is this not all risk? These are all the cracks that can show up in your financial plan, and you need to deal with those cracks. Right. Okay? So there's all kinds of ways to deal with those risks, but what is your plan to overcome risk? And when we talk about investment knowledge, we're talking about investment knowledge regarding goals, evaluating where you stand right now, cash management, and risk management. There are just five areas where we need more knowledge that we don't have. And the next step is debt. What do we need to know about debt that we don't know right now? Well, we shouldn't have any debt where the interest is not tax deductible. Generally speaking, you can arrange your affairs so that any interest that you pay on debt is tax deductible. And uh, people need to know how to do that. Often referred to as the Smith, the Smith Maneuver, originally invented by David Ingram many, many years ago. But the bottom line is, what is your debt situation? Do you have good debt or bad debt? And if you have bad debt, how do you get rid of it? Because bad debt will destroy you financially. Right. Bad debt is the result of having deficits. If you spend more than you earn, you end up financing that with bad debt. Okay? So if you go back to, back to cash management, if you do that right, technically you shouldn't have any bad debt. So you can go up and down the scale of these 10 steps. Yeah. Go back to your goals. They interrelate. Go back to your cash. Go back to your, where evaluating where you are. You nailed it. Right on. They interrelate. They overlap. They're 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 not uh, they're not independent of each other. They mm-hmm. fit together. There's a symbiotic relationship between all those fundamental steps. It's like having plates spinning. You have to go back yeah. and check on them. <laughs> so now we got retirement planning. Now retirement planning. If you've done everything else okay, is Not so tough. If you've done all the other steps poorly, it's going to be tough. But retirement planning is simply saying, when I retire, this is how much money I need to live. And this is where it's going to come from. That's retirement planning. I'm oversimplifying, but that's what it is. I was going to say, it can get very complex. Yeah. But that's exactly what it is. What's Uh, what's going to be coming in? What's going to be going out? You got it. You, 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 You know, you have income splitting and all kinds of other things that you need to deal with. But the bottom line is, what do I need to retire, and where's the, where's, where's the money going to come from? That's what we're talking about. Okay? And after you've done all that, you don't stop. What do you do with the extra money? You've, you've looked after your retirement, but you've still have got some extra money left over. And really, you should have. You should have not only an RRSP, you should have a cash account if you're dealing with a brokerage firm. You need unregistered money as well. And how do you, de- how do you determine that? And I like to say that the... The, the, the capital creation part of your plan is what you do with the tax savings from your RRSP. So, right. so if you put money into an RRSP, say $10,000 a year, you save $4,000 4, in tax, don't spend the 4000 Where do you invest that money? And if you put that into a TFSA as an example, the earnings from the TFSA could well be used to pay the tax from the RRSP down the road. 
So we're talking, if, and, and if I go back, I forgot to mention it when I talked about cash management. When we look at cash management, income tax is part of cash management as far as I'm concerned. Right. Uh, uh, not overpaying your income tax uh, improves your cash flow. And when we talk about that, we're talking about income splitting and all the other ways that you can save tax. These are all important issues, but these are all built in to a financial plan. They're all part of your overall financial plan. These can be the the parts of your financial plan. Inside my financial plan, I have a retirement plan. Inside my financial plan, I have a capital creation plan. I have a risk management section to my financial plan. So we have all those steps and we're up to step eight. And now we got step nine, which is your estate plan. This is how I pass on my assets to my beneficiaries, my descendants. What is my legacy? What exactly is going to happen with my finances when I pass on? That's the most important thing. And this can get very complex. How do I transfer those assets to my beneficiaries when I leave this planet, okay? And do I have a plan to do that? And the last part of of the overall plan is step number 10. It's the overall review, and it's probably as important as any other step. How often do I review that? How often should I review it? And what do I do when I review it? Right. So those are steps, and that's the process. That's the financial planning process. I have to go to the break. I'm going to go to the break, and when we come back, we'll continue to talk about the 13 reasons why we fail financially. Don't go away. Okay, we're back. Remind you once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is a live show. First hour here between 9 and 10 was a replay of last week, but this is a live show, and this is your chance to make yourself heard. It's your chance to make a phone call. It's your chance to talk to us about your money, more importantly about your money and how to keep it. That's what we're talking about, your money and how to keep it. Let's talk to Alan from South Vancouver. Alan, welcome to the program. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, Fred, I want to talk uh, to you, through you, yeah, to you? your listeners on the need of professionalism and what happens when there's a lack of professionalism. I recently went to a presentation, and they had a very high level of knowledge and professionalism, not unlike the times when I've attended your workshop I've always observed a high level of professionalism, and this is what they have to say. People investing in the market, what they usually do is go down to their local bank and uh, talk to the financial advisor. He asks them what level of risk you need, uh, are you comfortable with. Then he brings out their portfolio of stocks, which might be a dozen. <clears throat> then the investor becomes the advisor because he's asked, which one do you want? <laughs> There's no professionalism. You have to have knowledge and the 
person uh, in the business of being a financial advisor must be very professional if you're going to win in life. You must go to a highly professional individual, not another bank clerk. Alan, I I don't think you could have said it any better. So, you know, the bottom line is that you need a coach, okay? You need somebody that can coach you and basically guide you and say, well, this is where we're at right now. This is where we need to go, and this is the way I see things based on what you've told me. I've asked you a whole lot of questions, and you've given me some answers. I understand your uh, finances uh, from stem to stern right now. I've gone through the whole client discovery process. I understand uh, your income, your expenses, your assets, your liabilities, uh, your attitudes about money and all the rest of it. And based on what you've told me, this is what I would recommend. Right. Not, not what do you think you should do. <laughs> yeah, he's asking him question. to make a choice. Yeah. He came for advice. Now, from the <laughs> seminar I went to, they said there's a 90, 1990 rule, and that is without professional advice and talking to someone that that has a variety, not only what the the institution has to have, but the whole North America, for instance, or foreign markets, he said the 90% rule is 90% of the people will lose 90% of their money in 90 days without professionalism. Wow. Those are startling statistics. Yeah. Frightening, almost. Yes. It's a different situation when they get professionalism, which uh, I'm convinced uh, your, your organization gives. Well, I appreciate the compliment, Alan. Yes. Uh, I can't well, I tell you how much I appreciate that. And yeah. uh, bottom line is that people fail because of lack of knowledge, and you've just driven that home in a nutshell. Yeah. It's, it's lack of knowledge. Um, if, if, if you have the knowledge, you're going to say to that advisor, tell me what I should do. Don't ask, don't ask me to tell you what I should do. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, we, we, we need your your input on that process with regards to the goals that you want to achieve. We can't decide that for you. We can run the numbers. We can talk about risk. We can go through your investments. But you, you have to do the thinking about what, what it is you want to have happen in the future, whether it be for your retirement or the legacy that you live leave. Yeah, but at the same time, you should have the full spectrum of what's available, you know, not just uh, a dozen stocks. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. The bottom line is that you're going to need enough income to be able to retire on at some particular point, be it 40 or 50 or $60,000 a year. You're going to need an income that's the equivalent of that. And therefore, to have that income, you're going to, the Canada Pension Plan, the old age pension, isn't isn't going to make that up. It's not going to be enough. Yeah. You're going to need another pension plan or you're going to need a, uh, half a million dollars in capital or investments or something like that to be able to achieve that. Right. How are you going to grow the money that you're going to need to provide that income down the road? Yeah. And uh, uh, you need a proper financial plan to do that. And I've said it and I'll say it again. You need a plan, you need a financial coach, or you need a planner, and you need the right products. And the right products inside your plan is the most important part of that whole uh, issue. Right. I, I, I see it too often. Somebody comes into the office and they're dealing with one financial institution. They get all their money invested in uh, one of the major banks, okay, maybe BMO, and, and it's all bank funds, yeah. period. So right. they've, they've gone into the bank, they've sat down with the bank manager, and the bank manager has said, well, here's a portfolio of funds. To right. get the best products inside your plan, you need to deal with an independent financial advisor, Absolutely. somebody that represents everybody. Yeah. Okay. Because I can't find if 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 you come in to me and say, I need a diversified portfolio. I'm gonna the first thing I'm gonna say you're gonna need about ten different positions. Yeah. Okay. To to diversify properly, you need about ten different securities. Now some people might say eight or nine or eleven, but I said about ten. Let's say about right. ten. Right. So if you need ten different positions. I can't find the best fund uh, all under one roof. Yeah, I have to deal with several financial institutions to be able to get the best funds in every category. Right, right. 
So anytime I see a portfolio where it's all one financial institution, that's a big red flag yeah. right off the bat. Yeah. I think it's important also for people to understand what different sources of advice are available. At Scotia McLeod and what, what, what our team here, do, what we do, we're addressing more complex situations. And um, I mean, some of them are obviously very simple, but once your, your financial situation and your investments get more complex or, or larger, then you need a better level of advice. And, and that's where uh, the advanced level of Scotia McLeod and, and what our team does comes into play. Well, that's a great difference than taking a tip. Uh, from a neighbor on what to invest in or going to a person that's had uh, six months experience and uh, and taking advice from them on where you should invest your money for to meet your goals. Alan, I couldn't agree with you more. Thank you very much for the audience. Enjoy the Easter weekend. Yeah, I will. I am. Okay. <laughs> you take okay. care, and I'll talk okay. to you Thursday. Bye, okay. Take care. Bye. Okay. If you've just joined us, uh, I'm Certified Financial Planner Fred Snyder, also Registered Financial Planner representing Scotia McLeod. I'm talking with Stephen Baird. We're talking about your money, more importantly, about your money and how to keep it. And Alan's line is now open, so I invite you to grab a line give us a call. Again, uh, you may have a question. You may have a comment. Uh, maybe you want to uh, enroll in our next uh, workshop. You can call us. You might have some questions to ask, or you can call Frida. Frida's down at the office, and you can reach Frida right now at area code 604-737-3512. If you're calling long distance, it's 800-661-1495. Remind you, once again, I'll be in Nanaimo on uh, Tuesday and uh, Wednesday at the Coast Bastion Hotel. If you're over on the island, you want to make an appointment to see myself, you may be a client already, you might want to review, or maybe you want us to... Uh, Take a look at what you have right now and make some recommendations. So again, I say it, and I'll say it again and again and again. You need a plan, you need a planner, and you need the best products inside your plan. If you're unsure as to where you stand in that particular regard, it's time to make a phone call. 604-280-0650. Long distance, 877-280-0650. Frieda down at the office, area code 604 604- Seven three seven three five one two, long distance eight hundred six six one one four nine five. We're talking about your money and how to keep it. How to keep it is the important phraseology in there, because that is what people fail to do. We all make money. We all earn lots of money, but we spend it all. We often spend more than we earn. We end up with bad debt, high interest rates. They're not tax deductible. We don't have a plan. We wonder where we're at from a financial uh, point of view. Are we going to achieve our financial objectives? Are we going to be financially independent? And that really depends on your financial advisor. It depends on you and how motivated you are to achieve financial success. And again, as I've said many, many times before, you have to want to. And want to may sound oversimplified, but it's the truth. A lot of people don't want to pay the price. They want to get there somehow by magic. They think somebody's just going to hand it to them. They're going to win the lottery or something. And again, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Uh, the definition of insanity, according to Einstein, is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result. So if you're repeating the same mistakes because you don't have a financial plan, it's time to get one. And Steve, I'm going to tell you, from my experience... 90% of the people that come to see me don't have a financial plan. More, probably more than that. They have a portfolio. <clears throat> they have some investments quite often, but they don't have a plan. I've... And, and the person they're dealing with calls him or herself a financial planner. Right. So can you imagine going to a financial planner that doesn't give you a financial plan? Imagine <laughs> that. It's outrageous when you think about it. So once again, area code 604 Long distance, 877-280-0650. Log on, www.am650radio.com. Uh, click on uh, Watch uh, TV, and you can see us live because this is webcast. doesn't matter where you are in the world. It's amazing technology that's out there. And again, Frida's down at the office. Area code 604-737-3512. Long distance. 800-661-1495. So we're talking about your money, more importantly about your money and how to keep it. And again, that's the financial planning process. So get yourself a written financial plan. Those would be the, the subsections of the plan. 
Now, I've only covered <laughs> investment knowledge so far. Number two is limited vision. Number two reason why people fail financially, and we got to cover this in about the next seven minutes. <laughs> we don't have enough time, okay? Limited vision. So what does, what does limited vision mean? If I say limited vision to you, Steve, what do you think that means? To me, that means the, when I'm sitting with people, they just don't have an idea of what direction they're going or what they actually want. Limited vision is no goals. No goals. You know, what do you, they, what, the, what do you the, want to do in retirement? I don't know. They don't have something to look at. Right. Limited vision is being able to visualize yourself sitting on the beach in Hawaii. You can feel the sun on your back. You can feel the hot sand crunching between your toes. You can hear the <laughs> seagulls soaring overhead, and you can hear the waves lapping on the beach. That is vision. You can see something. I want a place at Whistler. I can see myself skiing down the mountain and skiing into the back door of my, of my condo at, uh, <laughs> at Whistler. Or I can see myself standing on the bridge of my 40-foot yacht. doesn't matter what it is. You've got to be able to establish goals, and you have to see yourself having already achieved those goals. So limited vision is having goals. I could talk about this for three hours. So could I. <laughs> the, 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 book, the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill is all about limited vision. It's about establishing and setting goals. Napoleon Hill says that anything you can vividly imagine, ardently desire, and enthusiastically act upon will inevitably come to pass. So get the book. Think It's a free download. You got a computer? Go on the Internet. Google it. Look up Think and Grow Rich. You can download the book free. Read the book. I consider that book to be my Bible. Did you know that there's an audio version of that where it's actually Napoleon Hill narrating it? Yes. It's, it's pretty neat. I have, it on, I, have, I have that on my computer as well. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. It's great. So limited vision, I wish I had more time. I, <laughs> I would like to really beat this one to death. But limited vision is the number two out of 13. We've only covered one and two. Number one was lack of knowledge. Limited vision is number two. What do you think number three is? Off the top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, this is all some of the stuff that right, we could be talking right. about. So let's let's deal with uh, uh, number three, entrenched habits. Okay? So we got lack of knowledge, limited vision, and entrenched habits. These tie, This ties right into limited vision because well, you just keep doing the same well, they thing all you've tie. always they, they, You know, they all tie together. Entrenched habits is, is like no goals. I, I, I want to quit smoking. You can't quit. That's an entrenched habit. Get in the habit of saving money so you can't quit, and that would be a good habit. Okay? <laughs> yeah, wake up 20 years later and you're okay. doing the same thing. Yeah. Okay? But think about what we're talking about. No goals. Procrastinating. Not budgeting. Paying too much tax. Failing to shop for the best products. And failing to plan. These are entrenched habits. And we'll wind up on entrenched habits. And then next week, we'll continue talking about the other reasons. But let's just talk about these three today, because I think these are the fundamental main reasons why people fail financially. Lack of knowledge, limited vision, and entrenched habits. So entrenched habits doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting a different result. And that's the definition of insanity. So what entrenched habits do you have? Hey, I'll do it tomorrow. I, I know I need a financial plan. Darn it, I've been listening to that show for a long time. I know I need one, but I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it Monday. And, and then tomorrow <laughs> comes. What do we say? I'll do it next week. Somehow it's just not the right time. Ladies and gentlemen and listeners, the right time is now. You need a financial plan, make a phone call. Give Frida a call down at the office. Area code 604-737-3512, long distance, 800-661-1495. Again, I remind you of being in Nanaimo on Tuesday and Wednesday at the Coast Bastion Hotel. You want to see me to talk about financial planning, uh, to talk about your overall financial situation, whatever it might be, give free to call, book an appointment. Be happy to look after you when I'm in Nanaimo. Okay? So, again... When we talk about entrenched habits, what are some of the entrenched habits that you run into? I think the main one is procrastination. We're just sort of shoveling things underneath the, the rug and saying, oh, it'll take care of itself. But you have, to, uh, you have to get into a habit of proactivity rather than reactivity. Tell me something. 
Have you ever procrastinated? No, never. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I, Absolutely. We, we all, all do, it. do it. We're all victims of it. Absolutely. Okay. You can't so do it's a struggle. All at once. It's a struggle. But it's a struggle that we all encounter. Zig Ziglar is probably one of the greatest motivational speakers I've ever listened to. And his last book was called Embrace the Struggle. I don't think I've read that one. No. Great book. Embrace the Struggle. Because, hey, if this stuff was easy, we'd all be successful to, to a very huge degree, okay? It's not easy. It takes effort. It takes time. You got to want to. You got to become obsessed. That's what we're talking about, okay? So once again, area code 604-280-0650. Long distance, 877-280-0650. But the most important number of all is Frida down at the office at area code 604-737-3512. Uh, if you're calling long distance and you want to talk to Frida, 800-661-1495. So what advice would you give? We'll wind up on this. Sure. What advice would you give our listeners right now? Well, take those three points and really think about them as they affect your overall life and your overall financial picture. Um, you know, ultimately here, we're not even talking about money. No. We're not even talking about investing. We're talking about that, the motation and the actual engaging of your mind to dealing it with your finances. It can be any goal. It can be to lose 10 pounds. Right. Okay. This, this can apply to anything. I think, I think the secret of financial success, the secret of any kind of success, is the worthwhile, is, is the gradual realization of worthwhile goals. So you have to establish goals, and you gotta, you got to establish a journey in the direction of those goals. Frustration becomes the obstacles that you have to overcome, and we've been talking about the 13 major reasons, the 13 obstacles that we have to overcome to achieve our financial success. So once again, uh, thanks uh, for participating in the show, and uh, thanks for listening. Glad you're with us. See you same time, same station next week. Bye for now. Happy Easter.